So we're here at Texas Instruments, and uh, you just announced the OMAP 5. Yes, definitely. It's an exciting project, product. We really think that this is going to transform what mobile devices will be able to do uh, next year. And so this is ARM Cortex A15. Yes, world's first Cortex A15. This is dual core Cortex A15. Uh, it really takes computing to the next level, supports up to 8 gigabytes of memory, multiple operating systems simultaneously. You got the performance. Uh, this is giving you basically your laptop type performance with lots of memory. You can do uh, uh, content creation, productivity applications. It really changes the game. So how fast are you moving into that next generation? So we'll be sampling later this year and uh, we will have production phones in the market uh, for Christmas 2012. Later this year. So this is it already. Uh, there's a what you call uh, all your partners will get samples. Yes. And they will be be able to work yes. on it. So next year at this show, you'll see some pretty exciting demonstrations of the technology. Like I said, we'll sample later this year, and we'll showcase a lot of that uh, mobile Congress next year. Does that mean basically that all the smartphones could be as powerful as a full laptop? That's where it's going. I tell you, uh, by the end of 2012, that's where it's going to be. Uh, this thing takes it to the next level. We're extending, we're showing a lot of 3D. In fact, the first uh, 3D uh, smartphone from uh, you know, LG just announced that has OMAP 4 in it. Uh, some of the technologies you see here and into next year are going to come out of the first products to market with really uh, innovative technology. So, excited. But already, OMAP 4 is. Uh... It's also, it can power an uh, HD screen with a lot of browser windows, yes. tabs. and OMAP 5 takes it to the next level. Actually, OMAP 5, we uh, support dual stereoscopic cameras. So you can have forward and backward facing cameras. Uh, we support up to four displays uh, simultaneously. So you can uh, have three large uh, LCDs plus HDMI 1.4a, uh, which supports 3D. Uh, we support up to QSXGA resolution. So this is uh, serious stuff. These phones are not going to be phones anymore. They're basically mobile computers that just happen to be able to make phone calls. QS... Uh, QSXGA. Is that basically Quad HD? Yeah, so, yeah. It's, it is? It's a 2K by 2K, basically. 2K by 2K. Yeah. So it's the same as 4 HD, HD screens? 2560 by 2048. Is, yeah, is 4 times 1080p? Basically. Something like that? Right. So uh, will there be uh, like a whole wave of... A lot of companies are doing 3D screens. Yeah. Will there be now the Quad HD coming? And is TI part of that? Uh, oh, well, a lot of these displays, these uh, high resolution displays are external, but you'll see uh, continuing uh, QHD uh, type of displays coming on uh, cell phones. Uh, so resolution keeps going higher higher, but you reach kind of a limit. When you're talking four or five inches, you know, 300 dots per inch or pixels yeah. per inch becomes kind of where your eyes can resolve. So after some point, uh, the devices either have to get bigger. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the, the tablets, though, this is yeah. really important. Our devices are very strong in smartphones as well as tablets, uh, and tablets is where you're going to see a lot of the resolution growth, and we're ready to go with uh, high resolution uh, uh, tablets. So you saw the Motorola Atrix 4G. Uh, yes. Is TI going to be able to power that kind of with OMAP 4 already? You can do connect. Oh yes, yes. Everything. All those things are totally doable with OMAP 4, and OMAP 5 takes it to the next level, where you have true mobile computing, where I can be running a full uh, next generation Windows, uh, uh, you know, OS. Uh, they showed uh, uh, Microsoft showed in their keynote at CES running OMAP uh, 4, running the next generation Windows initial uh, version, and uh, OMAP 5 just takes that to the next level, 8 gigabytes of memory, incredible performance. Uh, you know, if you're talking 2 gigahertz uh, A15, that's equivalent to a 3 gigahertz A9, and we have two of those. So you can see the performance is there, the large memory is there, uh, support for uh, virtualization allows us to run multiple operating systems very efficiently. Uh, the game is going to change. When these parts come out, you'll be able to dock these. Look at our video. We have a video online that kind of gives you an idea of the amazing things you're going to be able to do. Uh, just dock this thing and uh, it's your desktop. So. But they, they were showing a demo on the OMAP 4, so yeah. can't well, it be released already? Well, OMAP 4, in, in, anything with Cortex-A9 is limited to address space. So this will take definitely, there's a lot of room. There's going to be a lot of interesting products coming out. I'm just saying the next generation in 2012, uh, towards the end of 2012, you'll be able to take this to the next level, have large memory beyond two gigabytes. Four gigabytes is probably a sweet spot you'll see in 2012, 2013. Uh, once you get to this size memory, you can have multiple operating systems. You can do some really interesting applications, applications that uh, use large data, uh, multiple operating systems. Uh, they can both have two gigabytes uh, each. 
Uh, so it's going to be kind of interesting about the new things you're going to be able to do, you know, productivity apps. We're showing you know, video, you actually can do video editing on your smartphone, which today, you know, I mean, real heavy duty video editing, uh, you'll have the capabilities to do this. HD video editing? Yes, yes, it's coming, it's coming. How about servers? Sir, well, that's an interesting question because this technology, ARM is pushing real hard uh, into server technologies. The A15 definitely can extend into that. Uh, it's a very scalable architecture. You can do clusters of four. You can see eight, 16, beyond. Uh, you know, for these devices, there's actually a lot of interest in this into server, you know, smaller server applications. Uh, so that's, that's definitely feasible. When you start getting to this level of performance, it really opens up a whole door you know, to a bunch of new opportunities. And uh, in graphics, uh, TI, you've worked a long time with Imagination. Yes. Uh, uh, what's the difference between uh, what uh, ARM is uh, suggesting with T604? Uh, can you say anything about uh, I, I why you get, work with Imagination? I, I, I can't get into the details, really. You know, we evaluate every, uh, every version. Uh, we're, this uh, OMAP 5 is uh, SGX uh, 544. MP, so we'll have multiple GPUs in OMAP 5. Uh, and uh, the nice thing for our, our uh, customers is OMAP 4 to OMAP 5 is a real nice transition. Uh, we made a huge step from OMAP 3 to OMAP 4, and there are uh, a lot of uh, new things. OMAP 4 to OMAP 5, we leverage a lot. We're able to increase the bandwidth. Uh, and the nice thing for our customers they're excited about is they can move very quickly from OMAP 4 to OMAP 5. So they can bring products to market uh, a lot faster uh, with OMAP 5. So what do you think about this industry, uh, this whole ARM ecosystem with a lot of companies yeah. uh, uh, do, putting a lot of R&D in there? Uh, but the, the volumes are huge and the growth is, is incredible, no? Yeah, we're talking uh, half a billion units this year. I mean, this is a huge market and it's continuing to grow. The smartphone is taking you know, beyond 20, 30% of the market share of all, all phones, and that's just going to grow. Uh, and then when you have these capabilities where it's your computer, it's your entertainment device, it's, it's everything, uh, that's going to grow the market even more. So, How about the developing markets? Are you looking into that? Yeah, definitely. So the interesting thing is when we have an OMAP 4 or an OMAP 5, it doesn't obsolete any of our other products. We're seeing a lot of growth even with OMAP 3 in low-cost applications in China, for example. So the beauty of it is we can be next year showing high, very high-end uh, OMAP 5, OMAP 4 will move down into the mid-tier, and then OMAP 3 goes into the lower tier. So we have the strategy where the capabilities, they live on for a number of years, but end up in different, uh, different price points and different markets over time. So, so uh, how, how many nanometers is OMAP 5? So OMAP 5 is 28 nanometers. 28? 28 nanometers. How do you get so small? Hey, we, do you work with uh, do you work with IBM or these guys? We work with multiple founders. TI, the, the beauty of TI and the, uh, our strategy is we define our own process, our own 20 nanometer process, and then we work with multiple foundries, so we can go anywhere. Uh, we can move it from place to place, uh, which allows us to get uh, better economics. And uh, when we need to raise capacity fast, we can move to other foundries as needed. So this kind of model has worked really well for us with OMAP 3 and OMAP 4. We'll continue with OMAP 5 and have a 20 nanometer that we control. It is optimized for mobile devices. But you're not fabless, totally, are you? No, we're huge fab, you know, we are, especially in our analog. We just opened up a 300 millil uh, millimeter analog wafer. Uh, so we're on the leading edge. We are the leading edge of, uh, of uh, analog wafer fabs, and we do digital too, but all the leading edge stuff we define, and then we go outside to outside foundries. So you use the capacity uh, of the whole world to produce oh, these things. that's the beauty of it. I mean, if there's an earthquake in Taiwan, we can move to uh, Korea or some other place to move this device. If uh, a hot device comes out that exceeds expectations, we can build capacity a lot faster than what we could in one place. It gives us a nice uh, flexibility and uh, economics 